Greetings, everybody. Welcome to One Degree of Scandalous with Cato Kalin. I am here. Tom Zenner over here. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, we're wrapping up this year. I can't believe it. A lot where we're pushing 30 episodes of this show. Uh, we've had some doozies. We're going to talk about it. 2022, right? It is still it? is 2022 okay. for the next couple of weeks. It, it, it went fast, didn't it? This, I know. I'm thinking of New Year's. La- last year, I went to the worst New Year's Eve party. When the, when the party breaks up at about 11, you know it's a bad party. Was so. that because it was still kind of the, the tail <laughs> you know, end of the pandemic? It was just <laughs> no, a bad... No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one waited until midnight. Now nah, I gotta go. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> it's only eleven. Ah, forget Ryan Seacrest. We don't need to see the ball <laughs> drop. None of that nonsense. Um, yeah, the holidays are almost here. It's kind of fun. I just got back from Boston. Almost, they're here already. Come oh, on, we, after Thanksgiving, they're here. No, I meant the actual Christmas Day. But you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, hustle and bustle. It's been fun. How was the week, sir? Week is uh, great. I, I finished a pilot uh, called Teen Court, uh, John Gray's Teen Court. Teen Court. If you know who John Gray is, I you did. I did, and I didn't know. And I just saw that he's got millions of followers. So he, it's his Teen Court. I'm the host, and I do the interviews. And it's really real cases of what teens go through with the the, the crazy stuff with non-binary or should I get a Brazilian butt lift? These people are 16, 14 years old, and they're and they're uh, basically suing their parents. Okay, so, so the concept is these kids can literally take their parents par- to court? Take to the court, and we have a, the judge, John Gray. Uh, we also have a, a psychologist on board, and they uh, they go through the entire case, and then they make a ruling. And they uh, they sign a contract that they uh, they will follow the ruling. You know, I have two observations. Number one, yeah. I think it's brilliant. I can't believe this hasn't been done in the past. I yeah. think this is a winner. John Gray, like you said, has a huge following. He's a pastor. I think he's based in South Carolina. Yep, Charleston. You're, you're talking millions of followers. He's built up quite a mega church there and a huge online following. And, and it's not a religious show, by the way, because I just did a show. He's, right. He, he, he's a More the erudite compass, man, very yeah. smart, and he makes these. I was, I was really impressed, really smart decisions. And uh, uh, but then we have the jury there, the jury of their peers, and I had I – had, I, 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 you never know. You it's never a pilot, know. but you know what? I think it's going to hit a nerve, and the niche is perfect. The timing is perfect, and I really and, and he and he's got the huge following. Everything is just lining up right, and I hope it's a hope it's a big hit. But I did it, done. Now it's in the editor, and then it's uh, they pitch. But I think it's going to go. But I got to tell you one other thing uh, before we bring in a guest that's been on before, uh, the highest rated guest. Uh, people loved seeing him. He's going to tell us what, how his life is now. But uh, on the Greg Gutfield show, which is the number one cable show beating uh, Cor- uh, oh, he, beat, he destroys beats, Colbert uh, and, and Fallon, Fallon and, and kill, uh, kill. the other English guy, Corden. Mm-hmm. So, uh, number one show. He mentioned the show that I produced and co-host called Ice Wars. That's hockey players without the puck, the sticks, just fights. No hockey, just the fights. And he loved it. What an endorsement. And we do the next one in Cheyenne, uh, Ma, uh, Wyoming. March 4th. Yeah. So it, we could not have gotten a better free publicity plug from him. And I'm so excited because I, I told you from day one, I go, this will be a hit. Mm-hmm. And uh, You got to invite him out. You got to bring well, him to Cheyenne. Well, Rough and Rowdy, it's the big thing with Barstool. Barstool's got, what, 45 million followers. Yeah. They're doing the Rough and Rowdy and that we have two of our fighters that won the last one. They're there. Now we got Barstool with us. So it's just, it's... It's a great week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of Barstool, did you see Portnoy go off on the Britney Griner return? Uh, the the, the, oh, the, the yeah. prisoner swap? He, he, he had and great Musk, Elon Musk, too. And I'm I'm with these guys with yeah. that. How do you leave a Marine behind? It's, We're America. I know. It's pretty shocking. I mean, you I, think that the negotiating power you have when you're when – you're, when you have in our prison one of the most dangerous people in the world, Merchant literally, of I mean, that, right. that's his background. Go look at the 60 Minutes piece if you want some background on the Merchant of Death. The, this guy is the no most, joke. The most dangerous person, they said in 60 Minutes, most dangerous person alive. He's killed more Americans. It's just, it blows me away. It's, and I've never watched one WNBA game, and now for sure I will never well, watch. you know, if an I, American I, I, is over there, you want him back. Okay, we don't want she Americans wants be, in right, foreign prisons. You got to get the you get the guy but, that's got my four God, years already. A, a great Marine that is back there, and I can't even imagine what their family is feeling, you know, knowing that he was left behind. Oh, they're not going to watch WNBA either. Oh, well, if she doesn't stand I mean, the attention, way beyond that. if they I mean, play yeah. the national anthem and she does not stand, put her hand on her heart, uh, I, I just can't believe I, what, what will happen to her. Uh, she got the biggest break of her life, I think, by b- being brought back in. And uh, I, I don't know if well, there's so much to talk about that they had a they had a choice, and then the uh, NBC put it out there. They had a choice, and then they deleted that and just said there was no choice. Shows you how corrupt, how corrupt 
uh, liberal media. It's just disappointing. Sorry. I mean, that guy's that's a, that Marine's a good guy. But anyway, um, a lot of scandals here at the end of the year. I can't wait for the scandals this next year. F FT, the FTX scandal, we're yeah. going to have something on that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, with that goofball, Sam Bankman Freed. I, 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 I've watched a couple of interviews. The with sex parties in Bahamas? Come on. It is unbelievable what has gone on with that. That thing, we're going to start peeling back the onion and have some people that were involved. I, I just got back from Boston. This was a whirlwind thing last night. I just literally got back late last night. I'm working on a, a pretty cool book. Oh, the uh, the book with can I say the name of, of which, what it's about or not? You, you can give an idea. It's it's about the the recruiting scandal, the Varsity Blues, Varsity Blues recruiting Blues. scandal, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a really really interesting book. It's gonna get a lot of attention when this thing comes out, and I'll share more info as we go down the line. But okay. The, the cool thing is, so I was in I hadn't been in Boston in 21 years. I used to work there. I used to be the sports anchor. Yep. At Fox, and I basically got run out of town, Cato. So I put a ban on myself. I'm not going back for 10 years. I want nothing to do with yes. being down for 10 years. I added another. 10 we, years onto that. That's right. <laughs> Did Biden get you to come back to LA? You know, you're released from Boston. It was fun to be back for a few minutes, but I went to Hyannisport. And so I was right next to where the Kennedy's compounds are. So you have all the Shrivers that have homes there. JFK's old house. I was right next to Ted Kennedy's house, which used to be Joe Kennedy's house, which was the house where the scandals. almost all, oh my God, if you, those walls could talk, you can't even imagine. I'll put up some video and some pictures here. But uh, the, the best part about it was the house I was literally right next to, I could have thrown a football to um, is the house where most of Kennedy's cabinet was during the Cuban Missile Crisis, right. making some decisions that wow. basically saved the world. So um, yeah, busy week, a lot going on. Make sure you download and subscribe. We're going to end the year with a bang here on One uh, Degree of Scandalous. Can I say uh, something also? Uh, it's, you, you were mentioning the holiday holiday seasons. They're running a lot of uh, holiday films. Uh, an actor friend of mine, Carlos Gomez, he was putting on his Instagram page and all over. If, if you go, uh, IMDb, he's a, he's a great actor. Uh, and uh, he, he put a movie that he uh, starred in that they're rerunning again for the holidays with Anne Heche. And I know we had a guest that yeah. was... Uh, yes, we did. Was, uh, ...was one of our highest rated shows well, with being the first... Well, he saw. He yeah, saw he saw. Are, went, is this your way of saying let's bring him in? <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I think I see him. He's here. David Manperl, let's bring you in, buddy. Good to see you again. Had you on the show. This was probably a few days after, you know, the actual... Crash when Anne Heche went into the house. This is the, the end of August, yeah, right? I, it was the biggest story for multiple weeks, and, and she I, ended up dying, unfortunately. And I was telling Tom about the the holiday movie coming up, and I said, "Why don't we get David?" Mm -hmm. I said, "This is a uh, it's sort of it's very current again because they're they're rerunning all these movies that uh, she was starring in." Yeah, David, welcome, man. It's good to see you again. And and you know the fun thing is he's just going to be hearing about how your life has probably changed a yeah, little bit over I'm, the past four or five months. But but you look good. Any any. Uh, any loud noises outside? There's no cars racing up and down the street today, I hope, right? It, calm down? <laughs> no, it's, no cars racing down the street. Yeah. They, they put up more speed bumps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the backstory is David lives very, very close to the house in Playa, Playa Vista, right? Um, Venice. Okay, in Venice, in Venice. Right, where, where Anne Heche, you know, was speeding up and down that street, crashed into a different house, and then ended up... Bar just barging into this into the garage, I think, or into the actual house of one of uh, David's neighbors. Right. And then David was the first one on the scene, talked to her, kind of, at least was able to communicate with her. And this was all before the house burst into flames. And, right. and now, you know, since this, David, you know, there's been more images that have been released. Um, the uh, the autopsy has been released on Anne Heche. So much to talk about here, but what, just, how's your life been, you know, the last five minutes? Because you got swept up right into the middle of this. Well, you're right to mention something like five minutes, and maybe the, the 15 minutes uh, applies here. It turned on for a week of things I've never seen before and understood, phone ringing all the time, people knocking at the door constantly, all kinds of crazy attention that I had never experienced in my life or even imagined I would experience, and it ended just as quickly. But there were remnants of things that stayed around with me, for sure. And I guess that's what you want to talk about today. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's sort of like uh, when the uh, O.G. Simpson trial was going on, everybody was driving on Rockingham. And I just wonder, it was sort of like the gravesite tours. You know what that is, right? In LA, you can go, You can go and uh, get a tour guide that takes you to all the crime scenes of L.A. And I wonder if they're doing that right now. Not that it was a crime scene, but a scene where uh, a horrific accident happened. Did you notice anything with more people coming in that street? Definitely noticed it, not to the level you're talking about, but, you know, for a long time, the house advertised itself with the way it had still the orange tape and the ropes and the boarded up and all that stuff. 
And so a lot of the neighbors asking questions about it. Some people were coming by to see it um, based on our location. Oh, were you near the so-and-so? Oh, I saw you on TV. That kind of stuff came out of the woodworks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it wasn't a big impact. Yeah. You know, so David, what, what's what's been your thought process th since then? Have you replayed the moment in your mind over and over again? There's not much you could do. I mean, this tragedy was you know, in the middle of it when you got there, but have you replayed like every single second of, of arriving there, talking to her and just, I'm sure everything kind of slowed down for a minute, but ha have you had this on your mind a lot over the last five months? It's amazing that you say that. It's actually finally subsided. I don't know exactly when it subsided, but that was for the first two or three months, that was constant. And it came in the form of just playing it over again to the point where it was reoccurring dreams and imagining right. how it could have gone differently. Um, imagine how I could have been better, different support. And yeah, we've all gone over the, the uh, I don't think I made any horrible mistakes and I did the best I could and it was going to be what it was going to be and all that, but still. Yeah, that's and natural, yeah. right? You're yeah, yeah. You, and, and, it, you'll have those uh, in a year from now. You might have another dream like, oh, we haven't had that. Then it just pops up again. Have you, have your neighbors, have you, uh, when it all happened, you know how neighbors kind of congregate and you, you start like a, a closeness to them because you have something that you all related to. Are you guys still, do you still have that where you made the new friends, the, you have neighbors you probably never talked to before, but now you've got this camaraderie. Do you notice that? Yes. Uh, well, especially in the beginning. Um, there was a lot of, oh, I saw you on TV and people came out of the woodwork from right. all over the place in my life. Old past acquaintances, lots of family, family from across the country, that sort of thing. Did anybody say, did anybody say we saw you on One Degree of Scandalous? Just say yes. <laughs> there was a couple of those for sure. Oh, I love in that. Fact, um, 100,000 the views, there better have been some people that said yeah, something. Yeah. It's a big show. <laughs> About 100,000 views, yeah. Um, I think in general, people were trying really hard to be polite and not overly ask about it and not pry. So it was able to die down more quickly um, than it might have otherwise. Sure. So oh, I was going to say, Tom, Tom, you brought up something in uh, how when after the fact it's been uh, a few months, how after it happens, they have that uh, little bit of delay of time where maybe there'll be some lawsuits that go on. Oh yeah, they're happening. David, you know, when you were on the first time, we talked about your neighbor, the person that was renting the house that, you know, Anne Hayes crashed into. Wow, I'm sure she was just in shock for the longest time, but that shock's worn off and she's now sued the she, estate of Anne Hayes because she lost everything. Is she gone? She said she doesn't have a place to live. Have you not seen her since, uh, you know, a couple days after this? I haven't seen her in person since a few days afterwards, but we have talked a number of times. And um, and I think she's doing okay. Everywhere from the GoFundMe page that did well for her to, you know, who knows what's going on with this lawsuit and what her actual damages are. That's, you know, that's for her to know and understand. And, um, you know, especially if she's got in injury and mental trauma and all those sort of right. things. It was pretty insane what happened to her. Yeah, you, she, you, she says she's startled by, startled by loud noises. She's plagued by nightmares and flashbacks of the crash, terrified of walking outside. She has no place to live. That's what? understandable. A car comes crashing into right. your house, bursts into flames, and a world-famous celebrity dies. That might linger. That might leave a mark. What, what, where is she living now? Does that, David, you Doesn't say you talk say. to her. Do you know where she lives? Um, I don't know exactly where she lives. She says she has no place high. to live. Now, she must no. have some place. Well, you said, the, you said the GoFundMe. What did the GoFundMe raise, you know? Let me get this volume up a little David, bit. David, uh, oh yeah, what I asked is, uh, uh, you you mentioned you talked to her and she did well on a GoFundMe page. Do you know what she made on the GoFundMe page? The last I looked, it was about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So it went from something where we wow. set a target um, very low and just to help her out to get you know things to get on your feet to get right. a couple of weeks at an Airbnb or whatever it is. Even though her life's upside down and everything's gone, I think that is an appropriate amount of money for her to get. And it all just goes straight to her, straight to the bank account. There's no like middlemen or people getting other things. And I'm really glad to have been part of that and that she was able to get that kind of money. I mean, yeah. when you have all this trauma, at least you've got a little bit of a 
uh, yeah. a boost to the bank account, that's definitely that, going to help soften it. Is there well, ta- you get taxes on there, right? I'm not sure how, how the GoFundMe money, I'm not sure if it does, but I'll tell you this. A bunch of lawyers got a hold of her because now she's suing for $2 million. So oh, the wow. dollar signs are out there for those attorneys. And and that's, right. you know, she probably was bombarded. She probably had every big, big civil it, lawyer in town, you know, trying to get her because, my God. They think they can get some cash. Right, yeah. $2 mil is what she's going for. Um, that's a lot. But she lost everything. I guess she probably had, I would assume, renter's insurance as well. So at least protects your property. Did you hear? Did she have insurance? Did I hear? That, that, I'm not positive about that. She said she was very underinsured or not insured, and I don't remember exactly, or it wasn't conclusive whether she had renter's insurance at all, but also what we were concerned with was how quickly any of those things like renter's insurance, payouts from um, the car insurance, the homeowner's insurance of the property owner, anything like that, those things just take forever and they determine how much your loss was and how much to give you. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden they do something like write you a $37,000 check and say, oh, by the way, your case is closed. It's done. That's the kind of thing that can be more infuriating for a covered person than than nothing else. Yeah, on top of the fact that everything's been destroyed. You know, the, the autopsy has come out and there was mm-hmm. traces, traces of cocaine in her system, but nothing major. There was also a little fentanyl but don't blow that out of proportion. That was for pain while she was in the hospital. So it, it sounds like if you read part of the yeah. autopsy report that she wasn't high. She wow. wasn't drunk. I, I'm going to do it. I, if, I you are, if you're on believe. cocaine and fentanyl, no matter what, you can't be no, driving No, time out. Car. The fentanyl I, came after when she was in the hospital. So the fentanyl, when, when, had, they did the autopsy after she died. She gets to the hospital. They give her the fentanyl for pain. Okay. Right? Because she's a burn victim. Right, but so but the, there was just traces of cocaine. Right. I find that hard to believe that she could be that erratic and they didn't say she was drunk. She was I, high on cocaine. I don't know. I don't know. I, I You find it weird, David? I mean, you heard her I driving out there. I, you know what? I believe she had men- mental illness. I think that's public and everybody knows there's a certain amount of mental illness. And when the demons start running around in someone's head, the panic attacks, those sorts of things, I think those overpower the effects of of drugs almost every time. So if things are going on that that got you in a terror and a panic, uh, I think those could be stronger than the effects of the drugs. And, and, uh, you know, obviously something was going on when she's driving down the street. Um, uh, It just doesn't seem like a calculated decision of here's what I'm going to do and here's how I'm going to go about doing it. That seems like... You know, something got a hold of this poor woman. Yeah, and I, I believe if uh, it was you said she had mental illness, and I think she's you probably take medication for that. I'm sure you prescribe medication from your physician. So was she on it or not? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Tom, you had the autopsy report. Of <laughs> what was in her body? I yeah, I didn't, I didn't know all of it. Well, I was just looking for the the because it's hard to do the auto- if, if it's all done the tox- uh, toxicology. That's after, like you said, there's fentanyl because of the pain. So how do you uh, how, how do they know what was there before and after? There's got to be a test before the it's, hospital it's, and after yeah. a blood sample. It's crazy how all the stories start churning though, right? Because man, you heard everything that she was high on cocaine. I mean, there was some crazy stuff out there that she yeah. was at Ellen's house the night before. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. Well, well, Tom, you know, you sorry know to interrupt true. you, but the story I heard it was that she was recording a podcast and was drinking on the podcast before the accident I, happened. I, I heard that story that's true. too. I don't know David, what's true. Yeah, stock tip. I think that was the day before, wasn't it? I, I don't I know. I think it was. But I, you're right. That that did happen. And then they played back some of those podcasts, and she was really slurring her words. So something was up. But I mean, if there's mental issues as well, or or some sort of disorder there. Yeah. It, it, it's just a toxic mix, perfect storm of everything. What about the tortoise? Have you heard about the tortoise? Remember we <laughs> talked about the tortoise was yeah, the, making the, a slow getaway the, from the yeah. house? We, at the shell station. The tortoise making a slow, the tortoise I believe was named Marley and um, has some amount of similarity to a tortoise we have here named Raphael. And um, so yeah, between the tortoise and the two dogs, I mean, you know, you talk about this woman having shell shock and so forth. This is now the tenant. She had no idea that it was a car that crarine through her house, literally all the way through the length of her house and came to rest at the back of her house. She had thought that an explosion went off right. or something came through the roof and exploded inside her house. 
And she was standing there in shock, trying to trying to get a hold of and save her pets and find a way out. And this is, you know, 30 seconds earlier, two minutes earlier, whatever it was, she was just having a normal morning. So, you know, any amount of shock that someone incurs on that. Right. And and uh, I just can't even comprehend. Yeah, I empathize with and her. And she on was that outside, one. right? I mean, she it was it she could, was she there. could she could no, I but I mean I mean that she could have been in the part she of it where the been. car went through. She could have been taken out by that mini. She was out, I thought easily. she she was outside, so no, safe. Well, she was around. I mean, she was definitely on the premises. Yeah. Hey, I'm just saying the car could have hit her if she yeah. was like if it went through the living room and she happened to be in the living room, she could have been knocked out by she the car. She could have been. David, I mean, how far did that car get into the house? We didn't really didn't ask you this the first time. But say like you know, say the it family room or something. It was 20 to 40 feet. Wow. It was literally 20 to 40 feet. It made it completely across the length of the living room. And she had mentioned she had been in that living room moments before. So it went in, entered the front of the house, went completely across the length of the living room, threw a wall or something wow. into the next room and came to a stop at the back of the house. And the ceiling, you know, like the lowered ceiling, whatever the acoustic tiles, I don't know what they were, but Maybe. all of that stuff came down in the wake of the car. So it was just like, like a war zone. Well, yeah, that of course house. it sounds Climbing like an explosion. To get to the car. You know, you, you see it on movies every now and then or TV yeah. shows. And here we are at Action Park Media, right? Connolly, Entourage, Stock tip, do you remember the episode with Gary Cole where he drove his car into his overpriced, underinsured MF in Beverly Hills mansion? Yes, he he drove it right into a house because his wife, you know, was holding on to the, the, the notes that he had for the uh, Aaron Sorkin meeting he, that he, he drove was it coming like the living room. Yeah, so he yeah. drove it right through it. I bet this was similar. I yeah, bet there was like, you know, David, there had, there had to be like, if you go through there, think of the electrical wiring. So there's sparks probably, and then the fire started shortly thereafter. But man, the chaos, the glass, just everything yeah. flying. It, if you're in that house, I mean, that is the last thing in the world. That's like a you're meteor in that crashing into your house, yeah. right? It's that random. It's crazy. Yeah, whether she was standing, you know, right outside the door, that's in the what kitchen, I, yeah. the side of that, or whatever, she had mentioned she was just there a moment ago, that sort of thing. We've all seen videos of cars crashing through storefronts. You know, it yeah. happens all the time from accidents to even people use it as a way to, to rob, I don't know, whatever kind of stores they crash their cars through. And this went further back and and that and i felt like in the storefront videos we've seen there's always a lot of light and there's a lot of broken glass but then it's just there's a flat trail to where the car is this car went up i don't know it wasn't like a ramp there was a uh there's a like a three foot something ledge or what it, that it had to go up and just fly into the house and it was going very quickly yeah it's a mini cooper too so those are light yeah i mean and david when you when you went in to to see the car you were aware of the anything could have collapsed in the house on you, correct? I didn't feel like the house was in trouble of falling down. I didn't even realize that what I was crawling over was the ceiling. Oh. I just thought it was an incredibly messy house. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Lynn. Um, yeah, it's just, I that. get it. Like I my place, it. yeah. I was wrong right. afterwards. I didn't know you at the time, yeah. and um, and. I didn't wasn't concerned about fire. I think I like I said last time, uh, I wasn't in a tremendous hurry. It wasn't like rush, 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 get this person out of the car, move them on. It was more like go in there and make people comfortable and tell them an emergency people will be here right away. And on the way to the car, you know, right. of course I encountered Lynn trying to trying to rescue her pets and so it took a little longer to get to Anne in the car, who, of course, well, I have well, no idea. Well, what but you didn't, you didn't know uh, at that time. You thought maybe an explosion also, or you knew at that time there was a car that went through the house? I knew that for sure. That it went through. I saw the car drive down the street, right, wrong. and I heard an accident at the end of the street. You're like thinking, wrong drive through window. And I went to, oh my goodness, wrong drive through window. That's right. You know who you're on the show with. I mean, I'm. Hey, Kato. Kato. Yeah. I gotta get stuff like well, that. I had it through some levity. Yeah. It's, but, it's, but being serious, it was uh, traumatic. It was traumatic. David, did any of the first responders give you kudos, say, well done, you did the best you could? Did they second guess you in any way? Or what was the reaction when they, they saw that you were the first one on the scene? Did they at least say, hey, man, you did all you could? I don't think, I think they had other things on their mind and they were working, 
you know, um, they were working a lot of fronts there. They were trying to figure out the best way into the house, one side, the other side, the back of the house, the front. They were trying to figure out if it was going to burn down and fall on them. They were going to try to figure out if there was anybody inside the house. They didn't realize right. the car was inside the house at the time. They were making their own assessments, and I don't think there were – you know, standing, listening to what anybody had to say and, and changing their mind over it. They just went through their regular procedure, which mm -hmm. seemed pretty reasonably mechanized. Though from my point of view and just my, you know, heart racing and things going fast, it just seemed like it took forever right. until they were inside that house and getting Anne out of the house. Right. Everything when your mind was going like in slow motion. I, I guess so. I think that's the that's the thing. You know, whole life going before your eyes is because you're you're playing it back so right. fast, or you, you're working such overtime. Do you think it could have made a difference if they got there sooner? Was there any way to save her? Like, did it make a difference? Was because she did she die of smoke in a hundred percent? Okay, I don't know if she died of getting burnt or smoke or whatever, but if there was a got there quicker, got the crane in there quicker that pulled the car out, had the, you know, the where were able to run in to the car and pull her out of the car instead of pulling the car out of the house first and then getting her out of the car. All of these things changed so fast in those early minutes. Um, so I think part of it was their initial assessment, even though yeah. I left, it was too much fire and, and I was, feeling unsafe there. Something one of the fire people told me later when they gave an interview, they, they called me over and asked uh, some questions. I, I think maybe the, one of the insurance companies, they explained why the firefighters weren't able to run into the house. And they said that depending on the type of call when, the, when they are initially dispatched, is whether or not they put on the gear and have the gear available. Like that fireproof gear they wear, they step into these pants and they pull them up and they got the tank on their back and, and then they jump in the fire truck and they start buckling it all up and getting everything ready so they hit the ground running and run right into the burning house kind of a thing. They were responding to a different kind of call in this situation. They didn't mm -hmm. realize there was anybody in the house. I don't think they realized there was fire at the time. That's right. They didn't realize there was fire in the beginning when the car, uh, fire trucks were dispatched. So they were coming to a car accident and a rescue and a much more low-key situation. And then the um, insurance uh, guy who was interviewing me, he had been retired ex-firefighter. And he explained that even if they learned it was a fire on the way that they wouldn't have been able to dress up in all that material and stuff until after the fire truck stopped, they would have had to open the right cabinets. They would have had to get out different sets of material and tanks than they would have had available if they had put them on immediately inside the uh, firehouse as they were getting in the truck. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't really an option to immediately have all that gear Right. And so nobody was going into the house. That makes but, sense, you know, but, logically, but it sucks if, you know, you're the one needing to be rescued. But you know they're doing their job. You of know course, they're they're, yeah. they're doing what they're uh -huh. supposed There's a reason for everything they're going to do. I mean, their their ultimate goal is that there's a life they're going to try to save the life. Yeah. Yeah. David, I'm sure your mind's played tricks with you over the last 4 or 5 months thinking about this. Was there anything that you thought that you could have done differently? Like if you had to play it all over again, it was impossible for you to know at the time. You did an amazing job, but do you think you could have carried her out that would have made a difference? Or have you thought about that? I think about that all the time. And actually carrying her out, pulling her out myself, I think that's truly beyond me, both because I have a bad back and the way she was wedged in there, but maybe something on that order. Um, attending to her much more urgently and more urgently than attending to the tenant would could might have helped um somehow communicating the urgency of pulling the car out to people that arrived but maybe they weren't in a place where they could hear i don't know um the reoccurring dream i had the I most i was gonna say that yeah this crazy thing that somehow i had seen at one of the hardware stores or something, some sort of a welding blanket or a fiberglass blanket, a blanket that protects you from heat when you're mm. 
when you're working with hot tools or, mm-hmm. or welding. I know what you're talking about. So uh, when I finally left the house because I wasn't uncomfortable, I wasn't comfortable inside the house anymore. Mm-hmm. And I left the house. I told myself I was leaving the house to try and maybe help put out the fire from a different side of it or a different angle. But I was really leaving the house and leaving her because I wasn't comfortable inside the house anymore. And so I'm standing in front of the house, right about the place where the neighbors are now handing me garden hoses and we're like squirting a garden hose that's barely making it to where the fire is and having zero effect whatsoever. And obviously zero effect. It was the most silly thing to try and aim this garden hose. And, um, and so one of the neighbors is handing me this fiberglass blanket and I'm not taking it. And I don't know why I'm not taking it. Like forever, someone's handing you something and you're not realizing they're handing it to you or not grabbing it from them or not understanding what it's about. Right. And what I'm clearly supposed to do is grab this blanket and go back inside and wrap the blanket around the victim. And maybe then I can leave. Oh, yeah, right. but that's a dream, right? And yeah. in the moment, there's no way. You don't have blankets. You don't have welder Nobody's gear. Nobody's handing yeah. me yeah, a yeah, blanket, yeah. actually. But I, it feels like all night long that I'm being handed this blanket and shrugging it off or not able to grab it or not mm-hmm. grasping the situation. And I stayed up a lot of nights with, right. or a lot of early mornings just with that, just with that blanket yeah. over and over again thing. You know, sure. I mean, that's... I get it. I get it. You, you know, know it. You know the connection that you have now with her and her legacy and everything. Have you gone back and watched her movies over the last five months? Because you do have this rare connection. You were the last person probably to speak seen, to her. I had seen quite a few of her movies. Um, not Volcano, though. I'm sorry to the world of Volcano, but you know, I actually liked Six Days and Seven Nights, and was a big Harrison Ford fan, and of course Donnie Brasco, amazing, and even if it was for Dustin Hoffman, you know, Wag the Dogs, an amazing movie. I hadn't re, I haven't reseen any of those, and I've wanted to. I've I've been meaning to. Yeah. Um, yeah. no. I I I don't know if I asked this question before, but uh, this last question for me is was I was going to ask you. You're, you're at the car, you're in the house. Is the owner of the, uh, uh, of the house seeing you? Are you, do you see her or is it just you looking at Anne Hayes in the car? The, she, she was a renter. That, she yeah. didn't own it. The re- yeah, the renter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the renter, the woman. Uh, are, is she aware no, that you're in the house? She was, um, she got out of the house. In fact, I went out of the house through the side with her. And I think another neighbor or somehow the gate, which seemed locked before, had been open. And then I went right. back in the house through the side. And this was before the fire ever started. Got it. Okay. Um, so then I didn't see the um, tenant for a long time mm-hmm. until I was finally completely out of the house. And the fire department was there and taken over and were just out of their way. And then... Right. She's got her pets corralled and their leashes tangling, and suddenly I'm helping her more. I got it. Maybe just to get my mind off of what's going right. on inside the house. And, and she's obviously grabbing things out of the house, correct? Like, like no, Marley, nothing. Tur- nothing. Oh, no, she just, there was I, no grabbing. She had a hundred percent focus on getting those three animals and getting out yeah. of the house. What great mother instincts! Yeah, uh, she had no shoes on at all. Yeah. Wow. You know, this um, this is going to sound like a weird question. And, and you even mentioned the fact that, you know, looking back, maybe, you know, she required a lot of attention, the tenant. Um, w- was she hysterical? Was she freaking out? Is that why people had to spend a little bit more time with her while Anne Hayes was in the car and she was really, really concerned about those pets? Did you did you find it a little odd Not at all? all. She was the opposite of hysterical. I mean, she was clearly Focus. in some amount of shock. And not answering questions perfectly and, you know, like um, at some point there was a certain kind of dog leash in a certain place in the house that she wanted, um, you know, but still that's kind of logical. You better get your dog on the leash properly, taking them out or they might just run back in, you know, just do it right. Do it the first time move on out but she's thinking and yeah. talking slowly and she was just in shock totally totally uh, focused that, it adrenaline kicked in and she was the save the animals survival mode right for sure everybody right. was everybody there yeah well look david man it, it, anything else anything else that you've thought about or a recollection or just something that now is kind of strange or odd that you've thought about or have we got all the details from you you think i'll just add that for a long time, I really wanted to go to Anne's funeral. 
I wanted to go to a memorial service, a ceremony. I wanted to, you know, was, was a, I definitely would not have wanted to have a conversation with people or be recognized or anything as somebody involved with that scene. And I've just thought about her kids a lot. Um, you know, these kids are really, at least they're not super, super young, but they're such an impressionable age. Yeah. You know, Homer at 20 and Atlas at, I think, 13 years old. 13 is very young. And so at this point, it's really all about them. And I'm, I really hope you guys that you're getting what you need and you have a lot of other family and friends support. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I have a 13 year old, right? Yeah. And that's unbelievable. And, and in such a, a, a dramatic and high profile way, right? And it's just, it's very, very tragic. You don't think about those kids because they aren't in the public spotlight. I mean, when yeah. you told me she had a 13 year old, I didn't even know it. So yeah, hoping that, that those kids get all the support they possibly can, for sure. All right, David, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time, David, again. Yep, it was a great episode earlier in the year. This one's going to be great, too. But really, the recollection that you have, the attention to detail, and just how articulate you are, man, we really appreciate it. I know our listeners do, too, and our yeah. viewers. So thank you so much. Happy holidays, okay? The most unique, hey, thank you. The most new, unique year of your life, no question. But I hope 2023 is a great one for you, okay? Hey, happy holidays. Happy New Year to you, too, God. Thank Goodbye. you very much. All right, thank See you. See, David, thank you so much. Yep. Okay, so yeah. David is, uh, he was great the first time. And, you know, you have five months to think about this. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. It's, it's hindsight. You start thinking of other things like, uh, like you said, he's going to have these recurring dreams. It's just, it's very normal. Uh, but, uh, you know, everything after time, yeah. it'll be less and less and less. I'll tell you this from my perspective I'm a pet owner now. I have a dog, right? I told you. Yeah. I've never had a dog. I never thought I'd have a dog. And the last time we talked about it, when he made that mad dash, you know, like he made me yeah. run a half Spike. a mile. Spike. Spike. I call him the Spikester. Um, it's amazing. I love this little guy. He's awesome. I mean, it was a rescue dog. So now I understand, you know, being frantic about saving a pet. I get it now. I have a different perspective. Yeah. Like, I, I, have you ever had a dog? I, I had, well, growing up okay. in, in Wisconsin, we had, we had a dog. And of course, Cola, Cola dog. We never <laughs> trained. We didn't, you know, you, you, when you're a kid and you get a dog, you say you're going to take care of it and do the, uh, all the stuff. <laughs> that, that and you kind of don't do it. Too. I was yeah, going, all right, kids, I'll take you to teen court. If you, if you don't do what you're yeah. saying you're going to do about taking care of these pets our, or this our, dog. Well, you know, we had the, the wintertime cola loved the snow and we would have my dad uh he would just we'd go the neighbors would all hear they're going cola trying to find it and we see the paws and the where where did the dog run off to the paws in the snow and it would we couldn't catch it it was just love being out you know what's crazy do you have any idea how many people name their pets Cato? Maybe after oh, yeah. the trial, or or how about well the Cato the Cato the children uh, the, as well? uh the Kita the what the, what the dog what's that that Cato was the dog. I just, they named the dog Cato after me. Uh, Nicole's uh, and uh, this uh, Justin and Sydney. The dog was oh, Cato. So when they said Cato quit drinking out of the toilet, I was I think it was, I wasn't doing that. Were you but responding was, though when I they said it? No, <laughs> no. I, I, but I, I always keep the lid down. But it's true that Cato uh, the Kita. Yeah. Is that right? What's it called? The, I, I don't look. I have one dog now. I, yeah. I'm, I'm slowly learning. I don't. I don't know all the breeds, <laughs> but yeah. I, I remember what you're talking about. So yeah. the, the family dog for the Simpsons was named Cato. Yeah. Well, at the, when I was there, they named. They got a dog, and they said we're going to call it Cato. I was there. I how, said, all right. How can you not love? Going to be kind of confusing. All right. Um, that was a big show. We had about a hundred thousand views on YouTube. Do you have any other? We're near the end of the year now. Any? What, what was your kind of favorite memories from some of our episodes past this year? Because I yep. want everybody to go back and watch them. I mean, there are I, some amazing guests that we have and, and topics. I, I was going to say that David's so enthralled with our show, he's still on listening. <laughs> we go, we, I, you can stay on, David, but otherwise, if you have somewhere to go, we're not going to. I just wanted to make sure that uh, he, that David knew he can stay. But if you want to go, I know our show's that compelling that David said, I'm not leaving. Uh, oh, I love don't. hearing you guys talk. Thanks, okay, man. Well, that's all right. Then stay enjoy. with us. Stay yeah. If you got something well, to add, jump I'll, in. I'll tell you another show that I really like. It, uh, is, uh, it's really sort of TMZ. When they, uh, when they listened to our show, we had Jason Alexander on, who was Britney Spears' first husband, yeah. who crashed the wedding. And then he came on the show, and I just remember sitting next to him in the studio, and and it was kind, very nice guy. But I know he kept vaping, 
And I was like, well, I guess you can vape on our well, show. Well, he wasn't like, just vaping. He had a oh, beer too. Oh, yeah. Or a beer. couple beers. So it, it was one of the big, it wasn't a regular, it was a big beer. Yeah. <laughs> so go back and watch that one because that was awesome. I mean, he was so revealing. He was great. Oh, yeah. Complete honesty. Yeah, Jason, we really appreciate it. You know, I, th I think I just saw a big thing in GQ that he's in right now. Wow. He's, he's getting a lot of attention. The first big interview, really the first interview he did was with us. Yeah. He literally got out of jail, and a couple of days later, he was here telling us everything. So if you're a Britney fan, if you're a Jason fan, if, if you just like scandal, it's one of the biggest yeah. scandals of the year because he crashed her wedding. And the things that he revealed, Cato, were unbelievable. The fact that Britney had contacted him three days before the wedding, basically uh, wanting amazing. to hook up, yeah. right? And the fact that earlier that year, they were planning a little escape rendezvous. rendezvous. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, have you, I've not heard one word. I, I see him on the Instagram, but I haven't heard one her, her, a word of how her marriage is doing. I don't know if that's good. It's probably a good thing, but I don't know. You think that people have got that microscope on her to see when, if there's going to be a breakup or how the wedding, how the marriage is going, but you don't hear anything. And I wonder if he does. You know, that'd be a great, uh, if he's, if she's contacted him at all. No, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll reach out. Happened. Maybe we can get him yeah. here before the end that'd of the year be great. too. I think she's a prisoner in her own house. Clearly. Yeah. I think she's got so many people around yeah. her that it's a horrible life for her. It's terrible. Some of the other highlights, we had the big walleye fishing scandal. We had one of the guys that literally yeah, that, lost tens of thousands of dollars that, to that's these going cheaters. To that's going to trial. Yeah, go back and watch that one. How about Miss Missouri, who came and gave us the lowdown on the Miss USA scandal? And of course, um, J-Lo and Ben getting married. And we had Ryan, Ryan Wolf. Yeah, Ryan I, Wolf, the guy yeah. that married them. Right. Uh, that's incredible. And his, uh, like I said, when he had him on the show, his energy was, you could see why people love this guy. He's got the great energy. And I, I think it's great also because I used to watch to uh, catch a predator that we had Chris Hansen and, uh, you know, when South Park did the spoof on him and his sense of humor. It's great when you get someone you see on TV and then you get their other personality, the, the real person, and their sense of humor yeah. from such a serious show that he does our show. He kind of lightens up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it's Wayne Scott Lucas, too, with the uh, nipple gate. Okay, I'm going gonna, gonna to quiz you on some things from this past year. Are you yeah. ready? Remember when we had the, the attorney, Larry Foreman from Louisville? Who was yeah. famous DUI for going to guy. the Amber the for the guy. Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial? He took notes at the trial and he sold them on eBay. What? How much did he sell hey, them for? Do you remember? I, I think it was uh, uh, he sold it for twenty five thousand. Gave all the money to charity to a chil children's hospital. Correct, the one that she didn't. I think it was fifteen k. But you were right. He gave it all to charity. Yeah, cool uh, dude. Yeah, it was you know when Tom Lang, uh, the first detective on the O.J. Simpson case, um, who I still have contact with. Tom Lang came on the show and it was just all the. He just gave evidence that no one knew before. He yeah. talked about it on our show. Here, one of the best the stories, and we had so many. If you go back to our show where we had Tom Sturgis, the music executive, talking about signing 50 Cent yep. from a phone call at a house party in Texas, amazing backstory. Do you remember Jaime? Do you remember him talking about basically saving Tupac's life before Tupac was yep. a huge star? So all this is from the past year. We had Cato reveal the actual key that he still has from the guest house. I still have the guest house key. Don't know if the guest house is there, so that key uh, will be opening no doors. But I do have <laughs> we that We gotta key. figure out something we could do with that though, because that is a little slice. Yeah, it's all in all. It's, we're, sort of, we're kind of a, we should have music with the background of a, oh, do you remember when, and our reminiscing, but it's sort of A to Z, all the great things have happened. A to Z, of course, k and Zenner. There we go. So we got the, it's uh, K to Z. So, hey, but bottom line is tell a friend, go back and watch these because we, we hit every big scandal that's going on, you know, currently and then the big ones from the past too, yeah. including Ariana Grande donut licking. That was a yeah, good one too. That was, uh, everyone's great. Just go to One Degree of Scandalous and YouTube, subscribe. And Tom, uh, it's funny because we've gone through three studios on our podcast and now we're in the best studio ever. Um, and um, it's great. Here at uh, Kevin Connolly's. Yep. Action Park Media. We are here to stay. So, um, 8 p.m. Got a couple Christmas parties coming up. I know you got a lot of a lot of things planned. So, Kato, good seeing you. Yeah. Um, gosh, I was going to say there's something. I said the, the ice wars coming up, and um, have yeah, you have you come to, have you come to terms with the fact that the Packers aren't making the playoffs? Sorry, have you? not official yet. It's a six percent chance. Oh. But uh, you know they've got the bye this week, and then they get don't play until next Monday against the Rams. That's going to probably be no viewers because that's sort of like the, the well, actually maybe not because. Uh, Baker Mayfield may br bring a crowd to watch that <laughs> well, game. Is it here? Is it in L.A.? 
No, I think it's actually in Lambeau. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty positive it's in Lambeau. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun to watch, you know, a game in December in Lambeau. But you do have the Milwaukee Bucks, and they are on fire. Yeah, they look a little bit better than Orlando Magic, so that's good. Wow, that, that made him respond quickly. Okay, <laughs> stock tip, don't tip worry. Tip. The injuries, they're going to heal. You'll get another great draft pick. They'll be, uh, they'll be competing here shortly. All right, for Cato Kalen, I'm Tom Zenner. A couple more shows this year, but go back and enjoy some of those we just talked about. Thank you to, for David Manperl for showing up and talking about the Anne Hayes yeah. tragedy again. And have a great time, everybody, as you prepare for the holidays. For Cato Kalen, I'm Tom Zenner. We'll catch you next week.